many of you have ever uh, been to smithmag.net? No one? Okay. Well, I, I discovered this uh, a few weeks ago, and I, I find it a really quite interesting website because it is a website dedicated to six-word memoirs. Uh, so here's a, here's a few. Nora Ephron said, The secret of life, well, secret of life, marry an Italian. <laughs> and one of my favorite comedians in the world is this guy named Stephen Colbert. Uh, and uh, he, his, his three words, were, his six words were, well, I thought it was funny. <laughs> and um, I, I read one by Ernest Hemingway when he was asked by, um, by a journalist to sum up his life. And he said, for sale, baby shoes, never worn. And then I read this one on, on the site from some broken-hearted fella. It said, I still make coffee for two. What six words would you choose to sum up your life this far? If you were writing a six-word memoir, what would it be? Now, see, me being who I am, I'll put you on the spot if, anybody, <laughs> if anybody's uh, got one. Live every day like it's your last. That's a great one. Life's been a great journey. Life's been a great journey. Life's been a great journey. <laughs> what, what, what was that, Ara? <laughs> Otto Hutt could try harder. <laughs> I, I, I could put my name in that probably. So. Anyone else? It's a fascinating thing to think about, isn't it? Six words. Now here's the thing. Uh, some days the six words are different, eh? <laughs> I mean, some days the six words are, it's a great, you know, whatever your other six words would be. But some days, those six words are pretty brutal, and they can be really sad. See, that's life. That's the life we all have. I try to imagine uh, what six words the women on the way to the tomb that morning. Imagine that. They're carrying all, this, all these spices and stuff to embalm their Savior, their, their, their Lord, their their friend, their master, their rabbi. They're on their way to the tomb. It's not, the sun isn't even up yet. What six words do you think might be running around in their minds? The disciples are holed up somewhere, hiding, because, I mean, let's face it, their, their master has been arrested like a common criminal, tortured, beaten, and killed. And you're one of them. You're one of his followers. What six words are you thinking that morning before the sun comes up? Why did it happen like this? Why did it happen like this? Yeah. I mean, can you imagine? Why did he have to die? Mm. Yeah. You're just dying inside. And so we have six words. Everybody has these six words. But see, if we were going to sum up the essence of Christianity, if we were going to sum up life itself in terms of our faith, we have six words. Jesus is risen from the dead. Whatever six words those women had on their way with their spices, whatever six words were running around in their minds, whatever six words were defining them at that moment, when they walked away from that tomb, there were only six words 
that they had, the six words that completely exploded in their minds and they, they, it would mark them forever. They couldn't shake it off of them. They couldn't forget it. They couldn't, all it did, it just completely enveloped them. And all they could say and all they knew was, say it with me. And that was the six words that suddenly became the mantra for their life. It became the, the, the marking point. This was the moment that everything changed for them. The only problem was, it's a crazy message. Right? I mean, it's, this is crazy stuff. They, they run back to where the disciples are holed up, and the disciples... The word in the Greek, you know, the, the NIV is very kind to them. It says that it didn't make any sense. The word in the Greek literally means that they thought she was delirious. They thought that they, these women have lost their minds. See, these are the six words that those breathless women carried from the empty tomb back to the other disciples. What were they? Jesus. No one expected it. You realize that? No one in this story expected this to happen. In any of the four Gospels, nobody expects the resurrection. Right? And every time I kept thinking about that this week, I kept remembering the Monty Python sketch where, you know, no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. But see, no one, no one expected resurrection. None of the disciples, even though they'd heard Jesus himself tell them several times this was going to happen, none of them got it until this moment. Because Jesus defies all expectations. These six words suddenly took these anxious, nervous disciples who just were, were on the verge, I imagine, of running out of town and inspired them to get up and run to the tomb to see what had happened. See, these are the six words that have been passed from person to person, from community to community, every day since that moment. Do you realize that moment, everything changed? We are here today at this moment proclaiming our six word story, which is? Jesus is risen from the dead. This is our story. Here we are, over 2,000 years later, and it's still shaking the world. It's still changing hearts. These are the six words that reached the scattered and broken lost disciples that early morning and launched a spiritual movement that still shakes the world today. All over the world today, billions of people will gather in the name of the risen Christ. And you know what they will say? Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Jesus is risen from the dead. This is our six-word epitaph. Our six-word memoir. This is the six words for every believer. This is what the Apostle Paul grabbed a hold of when he was saying that no matter what the circumstance, no matter what I'm facing, whether I have a lot or whether I have a little, whether things are easy or whether they're tough, whether I'm hungry or whether I'm full, no matter what, I know that Jesus is risen from the dead. And I will never be the same. Because He has risen, His grace is sufficient for me. Because He has risen, death no longer wins. See, this, these are the, are the six words that uh, were on the lips of the martyrs when they were being burned alive, when they were being thrown into the lion's den. These were the six words that drove William Wilberforce. These are the six words that drove Martin Luther. These are the six words that drove Martin Luther King, Jr. These were the six words that walked with Oscar Romero. These were the six words that went with Pope Francis to the prison in Rome and washed the feet of the prisoners on Monday, Monday Thursday. Wasn't that great? Did you hear about that? Wasn't that beautiful?
these are the words all over this nation today that we proclaim. These six words. And they change everything. It is these six words that have found countless individuals like you and me whose lives were already dying, broken by pain and suffering, by sin and darkness, and they've given us new life. Amen? Amen. I mean, I tell you, these six words have changed my life. These six words walk with me in every hospital room I walk in. Every morning I wake up and I see the sun rise. These are my words. Jesus is risen from the dead. These six words empower us to walk into the darkest moments of life through the very valley of the shadow of death. You been there? Anybody been there? Walking through that valley? It's because of these six words that we have hope. It's because of these six words when this place is full and a, there's someone sitting in a casket, you know, lying in a casket here, be weird if they were sitting. They don't do it that way. <laughs> when, I, when I look at a casket and, the, and it's there, you know, these are the six words. These are the six words that we proclaim. Because he lives, so do we. Because he lives, we, we, have, we don't have to fear tomorrow. We don't have to fear anything. The Apostle Paul found so much strength from these words. He said it like this. He said, where death is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Because of these six words, we now live in the midst, in a world in the midst of rescue. Do you realize that? This is not an abandoned world. This is not a, a lost and dying world. This is a world that is being transformed every day by the one who has conquered death. This is the world that is being transformed at this very moment. There are people considering the environment. There are people considering the poor. There are people considering how do we conquer disease. There are people considering how do we understand the universe. There are people considering how do we help our neighbor. There are people considering what does it mean for me to embody the life and the teaching of Christ all over this world. And it is having an impact. Look around you. You could be stuffing your faith with chocolate right now, laying in bed. <laughs> I did a wedding, uh, well, I, I played at a wedding last night. I got home at, at 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay? Can I tell you, I was thinking, man, I'm going to be just dead tired in the morning. Oh, I'm going to be dragging my wagon in there. I better get myself together. If I don't get myself together, boy, I'm going to be able to string two sentences together. I don't know what I'm going to do. I woke up this morning. The sun was coming through the window. You know what six words burst in me? Jesus has risen from the dead. <coughs> I'm not tired right now. If you couldn't tell. <laughs> I'm fired up. And as you've heard me say, if these six words doesn't get your fire going, your wood's wet, right? <laughs> and I would pray that there would be a wind of the Spirit that would blow through here that would dry it out. That somehow these six words would start a fire in your heart today. That somehow these six words would touch something that needs touching. These six words would heal something that needs healing. These six words will lift you out of whatever pit that you're walking in. That these six words will give you hope to walk out of these doors and know that you can make a difference. That your life matters. That you count. And that there's nothing to be afraid of. Because what's the worst thing they can do to you? Death doesn't exist for us. Why? 
because Jesus is risen from the dead. This is my Easter message to you. Our six words. What six words sum up your life today? I hope that there are different six words right now than they were when you walked in this door. And here's some things I thought maybe we could ask ourselves. How will you let these six words change your six words today? Where in the essence of who you are do you hear the call to new life? out of the tomb of fear or hopelessness today? Where are you looking for the living among the dead? Where have you been seeking life where there really isn't any? How will you receive this news that has been handed from life to life, from age to age, and that is now coming to you again? Jesus is risen from the dead. Let us.